The Emergence of Buddhism Around the 7th century BC, the Ganges River saw the birth of many empires, and wars among them became more dynamic as a result of the emergence of iron weapons. It was under this circumstance that the Kshatriyas gained stronger power, and the growth of commercial trade allowed the Vaishyas to grow its influence as well. They dissented from the Brahmin ceremonies for being so ritualistic and disliked the caste-based social status discrimination. It was under this circumstance that the philosophy of the Upanishads began to develop. The philosophy, as manifested in the Upanishads, was about humans being able to release themselves from the cycle of death and rebirth and reach a state of cosmic bliss. From this philosophy came Buddhism, which was founded in the 6th century BC by Shakyamuni Buddha, Siddhartha Gautama. Shakyamuni Buddha accepted the idea of reincarnation as advocated by Brahmanism, but was critical of the caste system marked by social status discrimination. He instead promoted equality of all human beings. Buddhism kept growing with the support of the Kshatriyas and the Vaishyas and greatly contributed to the development of the Eastern Asian cultural sphere and the integration of Indian cultures. What prompted Siddhartha to create Buddhism? Siddhartha I was born in 624 BC as a prince in Kapilavastu Castle, modern-day Nepal. Married at the age of 16, I had a son and lived a peaceful life. One day while riding a cart, I saw people suffering from pain in their body and mind. Afterwards, I abandoned all my wealth and honor, and after extensive training, I gained enlightenment under the Bodhi tree of Bodhgaya. Sanarth is the place where Shakyamuni first began preaching, and it is one of the four sacred places of Buddhism. Development of Stavirovada Buddhism in the Maurya Empire In the 4th century BC, Alexander the Great invaded the northwestern part of India. In response, Chandragupta Maurya, the founder of the Maurya Empire, invaded and conquered northern India. This was his first step to building a unified empire. Supported by extensive military power, his grandson, Emperor Ashoka, was able to conquer most of the Indian subcontinent, except for the southern provinces, and built the first unified empire in the history of India. He connected all roads throughout the empire and reformed the central government system by having viceroys govern the outlying domains. Upon realizing the misery of war, he converted to Buddhism and ruled his empire based on the Buddhist doctrine. He supported the research, composition, and development of Buddhist texts and erected rocks and pillars where Buddhist teachings were inscribed throughout the empire. He also built a number of monasteries and stupas in various regions and enthusiastically supported the spread of the Stavirovada school of Buddhism by sending missionaries to Southeast Asian countries. Why did King Ashoka come to believe in Buddhism? Emperor Ashoka attacked the kingdom of Kalinga and won a victory. As he walked through the corpses of enemies, he was caught in unknown feelings of fear and regret. Reminiscent of those who were dying in pain, he abandoned the rule of power and turned to Buddhism. Stone pillars containing the teachings of the Buddha were erected in various places. In addition, according to the Buddhist teachings, he said that we should cherish all living things and show mercy. He legislated against animal cruelty and built an animal hospital for the first time in history. Development of the Mahayana Buddhism in the Kushan Dynasty the Maurya dynasty quickly declined after the death of Emperor Ashoka until its final fall in around the 2nd century BC. 
India remained divided for the next 200 years. Around this time, a tribe of Iranian origin called the Kushans put an end to the disorder when they expanded their territory into the northwest of the Indian subcontinent, establishing the Kushan Empire. The Kushan Empire thrived during the reign of Emperor Kanishka, who built a large empire whose territory covered much of Central Asia, centering on its capital in Gandhara. He also achieved economic growth through transit trade linking to Rome, Persia, India, and China. Being a devout Buddhist with wealth, Emperor Kanishka built a number of temples and stupas and played an important role in the establishment and spread of Mahayana Buddhism. Emperor Kanishka is credited with the construction of numerous temples and stone stupas and the development of architecture, paintings, and sculptures. What is the difference between Stavirovada Buddhism and Mahayana Buddhism? Stavirovada Buddhism, which was popular during the period of Emperor Ashoka of the Maurya dynasty, emphasized individual liberation and spread to Southeast Asian countries such as Sri Lanka and Thailand. In the period of Emperor Ashoka, the figures of Buddha were not specifically expressed and trees and the soles of feet were sculpted or left as empty spaces, symbolizing enlightenment or sacredness. Mahayana Buddhism, which was popular during the Kanishka period in the Kushan dynasty, placed great importance on public relief. Buddha figures were also sculpted according to the Gandhara art style. Mahayana Buddhism, along with Gandharan art, spread to East Asian countries such as Korea, China, and Japan. Hindu culture blooms in the Gupta dynasty. India again became divided around the 4th century BC after the decline of the Kushan dynasty. Chandragupta I, a king of the Gupta dynasty, united northern India and laid the foundation for the prosperity of the dynasty. The Gupta dynasty flourished in the early 5th century during the reign of Chandragupta II, who expanded the territory to the Bay of Bengal and the Arabian Sea. The maritime trade provided the dynasty with economic prosperity and advanced culture and arts. During the Gupta dynasty, Hinduism formed, combining Buddhism with various folk beliefs based on Brahmanism. Hinduism is a polytheistic religion that believes in many gods and goddesses including Brahman, Vishnu, and Shiva. Important religious practice for Hinduism is described in the Hindu religious text called the Code of Manu. Hinduism valued the duties of the caste to which it belonged. Hinduism claimed that God appeared to the world in the form of a king. Accordingly, the kings of the Gupta dynasty supported Hinduism to strengthen their royal authority. The Gupta dynasty was the golden age of Indian classical culture in many fields such as art, religion, and architecture. Regarding art, the dynasty saw the emergence of the Gupta style, which was a fusion of Gandharan art and traditional Indian art. One of the most widely known artworks of this period are the murals found in the Ajanta cave. Islamic Empire is established in northern India. India yet again became divided beginning in the mid-6th century as the Gupta dynasty declined. In the disorder of the time, Islamic forces invaded India around the 8th century. By the 11th century, the Islamic forces expanded their territory to reach the basin of the Ganges River. Around the early 13th century, the first Muslim dynasty was founded in the territory of Delhi. Over the next 300 years, five Muslim dynasties were established in northern India, and the rulers of these dynasties used the title of Sultan. For that reason, the five Muslim dynasties that emerged during this period are called the Delhi Sultanate. In the beginning, 
the Islamic forces destroyed Buddhist and Hindu temples, but later allowed the Buddhists and Hindus to practice their religion as long as they agreed to pay a head tax. Since Islam was a religion that preached social equality, many people who were not happy with the current caste system converted to Islam. This period saw the fusion of Hindu and Islamic cultures in the northern part of India, which was also under the occupation of Islamic forces. Islamic mosques that reflected the Hindu culture were built, and the procedures for ceremonies such as weddings and funerals became more similar between Hindus and Muslims.